If you suffer from bunions or hallux valgus, the good news is that an orthosis like this or this can really help. Even simple toe spacers can help to significantly reduce pain. In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the devices that are available, show you how to use them, and also discuss a little bit of research that supports or perhaps doesn't support their use. The first question is, do bunion correctors actually correct the position of the toe? Well, some interesting research from 2019 that I'll put in the description for those of you that are interested to read about it further, showed that a correction of two to three degrees was achieved over the time frame of one month when the group used both a day splint and a night splint, or what was described as a rigid splint and a dynamic splint. So we're gonna have a look at both the rigid and dynamic splints in this video. Overall though, the research doesn't support the use of the correctors having the ability to actually pull the toe across and correct it beyond the study showing two to three degrees being achievable. However, research does support the use of these orthosis to help reduce pain. So even though the position of the toe may not be corrected or to any noticeable degree, the reduction of pain makes these devices certainly worth trying. And these orthosis are cheap easy to get hold of and you can try different types to find the most comfortable one. Once again, the best combination seems to be one that you wear at night in combination with one that you can wear during the day. And even a toe spacer will count as something which can help to position the toe into a more comfortable position. Now I don't have a bunion or hallux valgus, but it's very easy to create an artificial one just by pulling my toe across there and pressing it into the ground. That will be the start of some hallux valgus as the big toe is rubbing against the second toe. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to fit this effectively. Pop it over your toe and then it goes around the ball of the foot and the strap then comes around like so. Get all of the soft padding in place. So around the outside border of the foot there and over the inside of the big toe here where if there is a bunion, then hopefully that won't be uncomfortable. If it is, you'll have to have a look for a slightly different device which doesn't put too much pressure over that bunion area. Pull the Velcro strap, and when you pull the Velcro strap, it will pull the toe out. So the more you pull, the more force it will put on the toe. You want to give it a decent pull, but not such that it's uncomfortable, because remember you're going to wear this at night and you won't be able to sleep if it's pulling the toe across and causing too much discomfort. That's the night splint. It's the rigid orthosis and very difficult to walk with this on. You might just be able to hobble to the toilet, but you certainly won't be able to bend your toe properly while this is on at night. You can get different versions of this, some that are a bit more expensive and have adjustments on the side. I'll put a picture of that on the screen now. And of course, we'll put plenty of links in the description so you can have a look at some products. Next, we're gonna fit a dynamic splint. So this splint, although rigid, does have this hinge which should allow the toe to bend. So we're gonna pop that on and then see how easy it is to walk. So slide that over the foot, get that hinge in place just to the lateral side of the ball of the foot there. Pull that strap, stick that down, that's Velcro, that's easy to do. Bring this one around the toe, thread it through, so that's the dynamic splint and it feels pretty comfortable. It's got that foam insert that you can see there and I can easily walk barefoot and that doesn't cause any restriction. Now apparently these are designed to fit in a shoe. So let's have a look and see how achievable that is. Certainly recommend putting it into a nice soft trainer with a wide toe box rather than any narrow shoes or stiff leather shoes where it might be harder and much more uncomfortable to fit that dynamic hinged orthosis into. The research supports the use of toe spacers and shows that when these are used for patients suffering from pain relating to hallux valgus or bunions or both, that the simple intervention of adding a toe spacer can help to reduce pain with walking. The next thing I want to show you is this bunion sleeve. This small piece of material will slide over the foot and the toe, and you can see there that it has a pad 
and this pad is made of soft gel. It's just a few mil thick, but that will go over the side here if there was any soreness and a bunion developing and would protect that, stop the skin rubbing as much and make it more comfortable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fit this. Okay, so pretty easy to fit, just slides on there. They do come in different sizes, but this is one of the one size fits all. So hopefully I am included in the all because it seems to fit me okay. And yeah, it's uh, perfectly comfortable. By its design, it also helps to keep the toe in alignment, but that depends on how far it's drifted across. It's not gonna offer you as much support and dynamic pull as the dynamic orthosis that we tried just a moment ago, but it's an inexpensive option that you can use to help reduce pain from bunions and to help manage the pain and discomfort associated with hallux valgus. We're also a big fan of these toe exercises. We featured these in our other video, which I'll put a link to at the end, and we'll pop a link in the description for these toe exercise straps as well which can be very helpful for managing hallux valgus and reducing pain. Now we have another popular hallux valgus bunion video on the channel and you've probably seen it already, but if you haven't, it's highly recommended and we'll pop it up on the screen here. If you found this video helpful, please like, consider subscribing and share it with anybody who you think may also find it helpful. Thanks for watching.